Okay, so I'm going to do a quick... Don't have a whole lot of time here, but I'm going to do a quick little... Uh, F-15 training sortie here since I haven't flown in a while, and uh, some friends of mine are asking for some tips, and uh, <laughs> I haven't flown in so long I'm kind of rusty, so let's uh, brush off the dust a little bit. <clears throat> Incidentally, if you um, haven't tried the uh, red flag campaign that uh, you can get with the uh, Nevada Test and Training Range, I highly recommend it. It's super awesome, and you'll learn a ton of stuff. For the F-15 or... Um, Or the A-10, either one, whichever you've chosen the uh, airplane. Now, I haven't had a chance to fly the F-5 through that yet, but I do do plan on it. Okay, so uh, this is just a couple of drone MiG-21s out here. Uh, so first off, to get this thing going, we're going to press right shift L to get the electronics going. So that's very simplified compared to something like the A-10, if you're used to it. And then press left alt, I'm sorry, right alt home. And just start up sequence for the left engine. Again, very simplified if you're used to it, like a full uh, DCS module. <coughs> I usually watch that intake, and once it drops, I'll start the other engine. Okay, so right control, home. And you can watch this stuff take place here. Um, where's my mouse cursor? <laughs> this is kind of a bit of a sloppy video, so sorry about that. But, you know, I'm just goofing around a little bit. Since this is a Flaming Cliffs 3 module and not a full, uh, full fledged close the canopy, left control C, it's not a full fledged DCS module. Um, there's a lot of simplification, so that's air brake on off, radar, weapon change, weapon release, just going over my binds here, trim, trim, trim. Target range, increase, decrease, zoom, zoom, scan up, scan down, nose gear, maneuvering range. Ah, there it is, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I'm not going to bother with clearance from the tower or anything like that. I'm just going to inch the throttle forward a little bit. I press and hold the nose wheel steering button so I can actually turn the bird. Rusty as hell. Pulling, oh yeah, wheels pulling a bit to the left for some reason. One thing that's always confused me in the F-15 is the uh, if you look at the uh, speed tape on the left side of the HUD, it goes backwards. As you accelerate, the tape goes down instead of up, or whatever. It's like reverse from all the others. So now we're gonna just use the throw forward, hear the afterburner kick in. I'm above 50 knots, that means I can take off the nose wheel steering, use my rudders, ease the stick back. I don't know, that's sloppy as hell, it's been too long. Around 150, 160. Bring in the landing gear. So, 
I want to go over radar modes uh, briefly. Um, let's go over my keybinds here. And I recommend binding these to your HOTAS. Um, so you look here, uh, this is kind of a legacy uh, lock on modern air and combat kind of setup here where you have. You press these numbers on your keyboard across the number row across the top to change your HUD mode. One will cycle through navigation modes. Two will cycle through PVR. Um, vertical scan for, you know, we'll, we'll, we can go into this. I think that's another video entirely, but uh, close combat, I use foresight mode and PVR mode, and I bind these to my HOTAS. So you'll notice uh, PVR mode, vertical scan mode, that's. Uh, Flood mode. These are all different radar modes that you can use to engage targets, and we'll, we'll get to those. Um, again, these are all on my HOTAS, so I kind of put it as, as an intuitive way. So if I pull one of my four-way hats backwards, close to me, it goes to boresight mode. And if I push forward, it's longer, like I'm pushing outwards. That's you know, like BVR mode, which is what we're going to be going to here. And there's another... How do I turn my radar on again? <laughs> it's been too long. <laughs> oh, well, I need to debind that garbage. Nose gear, nose gear. That's actually my comms. There we go. That's what it was. Okay, so now we've got two targets here. These which are guaranteed to be MiG-21s because I built the mission to have just those. So I'm going to put my bug, my cursor, so to speak, on them. Lock the target up by pressing uh, the appropriate key on my HOTAS, which I have bound. I'm going to select... If you look at the bottom left of my HUD here, where it says A4C, that's AMRAMS, the C model, and I have four of them. Here. Let's soft lock them. One track while well scan mode. There's different radar modes, right? So track while well scan. I'll just soft lock that one. This has been too long. And you'll notice here in the HUD, there's a few things going on. The circle's getting bigger. That's my. That's where you want to put the target before you fire. If you look on the right. To the right of that circle, I wish I had a cursor here. See what it says 693, 697, 700. That's the dynamic launch zone. And basically, the closer that little carrot is to the bottom, the more likely it is you're going to hit the target. Let's go ahead and Fox 3. Oh, there goes one. Shack. Splash 1. Lock him. Let's find the other one on radar, which is now at 10 miles range. Let's see. He's off to my left here. This circle here is your RWR. Again, this is kind of going back through basics. This circle here on the right, that thing right there, is RWR, radar warning receiver. And what that does, if you're unfamiliar, is it shows you. Uh, shows you. Uh, if somebody's scanning you with radar, that'll give you an indicator of kind of his rough direction where he's coming from. So it's it's it lets you know when you're being locked up by a hostile radar or a friendly one for that matter. Boy. This is just kind of like really rough, broad strokes here. I really need to do a better video on this. Okay, tally. I see him over there. And I'm actually going to go to close combat mode for the second pig. So let's change the HUD, select Sidewinders, and it's automatically locked up to the first thing it sees. That's what close combat mode does. And you hear that growl, the Sidewinder. When it pitches up like that, it means you got a good tone. Now, it doesn't mean you have a good firing solution. It means that your seeker detects the target. It doesn't mean you have good angles to fire. You notice that yellow light. Looks like I got a pretty good hit probability, so let's fire the Sidewinder, Fox 2, Splash 2, easy money. 
So that's a general, this is like a quick general survey of what the F-15 does. Normally you'd be doing this a lot higher, a lot faster, they'd be shooting back at you. There's a whole slew of tactics you would use for um, beyond visual range and you know, within visual range, the dogfight itself, that's a whole other, I mean, there's books written about both of those things. I would love to cover those in detail, but unfortunately I don't have the time today. Uh, got a few minutes is all, so... Uh, Another thing, just to kind of real quick, um, this is our radar, we can turn it on, we can turn it on standby, that's important, I bind that to my home test, because other airplanes have radar warning receivers too, which means that if you're flying around with your radar on, sweeping the sky, they're going to know about it, it's going to show up on their radar warning receiver, their RWR, which is fine, sometimes you want that, in an F-15, um, my preference is to fly high profile. I mean, you're you're not a stealth fighter. They're generally going to know you're there. You have that radar cross section of like a freaking you know, 747. Actually, maybe worse because you're boxier. So all those right angles are really good at reflecting our waves back to whoever sent them at you, which means they can see pretty easily. But that's fine in an F-15 because you're you're usually flying fighter sweeper cap, which is like kind of daring. Know the enemy to come up, come up and challenge you. The trick to that is to use your AM ramps to smack them before they have a chance to hit you, and that's not as easy as just locking up and firing. You have to do a bunch of things to set it up uh, because they're going to fire at you too. And if you look at the range of uh, the missiles that the Russian fighters tend to have, they're pretty uh, <laughs> they're long range as well. You don't want to mess with them. But the advantage you have is that. Their missiles, at least in DCS for right now, they have to be guided all the way to the target. Your AMRAMs will go, go autonomous within, uh, I forget the exact range, but they'll go what they call pit bull, which means that the missile is using its own guidance system rather than relying on your radar being painted from the F-15. So what that means is that once that missile goes autonomous, it goes pit bull, you have the freedom to turn tail and haul ass the other way hopefully getting out of the range of those missiles that are guiding on you. So that's the general idea. Um, like I said, I don't really have the time to uh, go into that. that. There's better videos by better pilots than me on all that stuff. And this is just kind of a quick little survey of how to blow something up in a real simple fashion with the F-15. I'm coming in way too fast. Alright, and before I spin out, I think that's going to be it for today. And it looks like I'm going to run out of runway. You can arrow break this thing too. Anyway, like I said, quick survey. Thanks for watching, and um... You know, I haven't flown the, the Eagle in quite some time, so maybe, maybe it's time to show it some love. I probably should stream the, uh, the Red Flag campaign, so maybe we'll look forward to that sometime soon. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope that helped even just a little bit. Any one of those things I did, you could spend a whole video on, so maybe we'll do that later.